You're in the Disruptors Club, guys. This is the final part with Chris Bricky from Stockspot, and he reveals some really interesting things that may change the way you do things. Check it out. You know, with every every business here, 2013, so you've been doing this for five years, I always find I personally go in phases, you know, where I'm really excited and I'm, you know, bullish about all sorts of things, and then other phases where I'm just obliterated and I want to call into like a little hole and just hide for a while while everything sort of blows over a bit. Um, I, I think, but I'm, my personality is very extreme, right, to some <laughs> extent. It, it swings quite wildly. But um, uh, have you experienced those kind of things? And, and I guess, how do you deal with that? How do you get re-inspired? I think probably the reasons we get inspired probably are similar. I mean, we run slightly different businesses, but to me, like those moments of inspiration and excitement usually come like with a new idea or, you know, when something just sort of snaps inside you where you're like, oh, wow, like I hadn't thought about connecting those dots in that, that way or, you know, I hadn't thought about that. And, and when those sorts of moments happen, it, it sort of opens your mind to all the possibilities of things you could do with, with those two dots that you've connected. Um, so, you know, that, that happens, you know, every, every so often, you know, with me, whether it's like a, a new idea of how we should be approaching, you know, any sort of, any part of our business. Um, and usually those ideas I find actually come not while I'm sitting at my desk, um, first of all. It's usually when I'm walking around or speaking to someone or going for a run. So most of those are uh -huh, exciting moments or, or often in bed as well when I'm, you know, when I'm going to sleep. Um, you know, they're things that then, you know, I, I kind of obsess and think about for days or weeks and, you know, you, you're, you're constantly throwing the ideas around in your head and transforming them different in different ways and sort of sanity testing them in different ways, you know, pitching them to people within the business, pitching them to, you know, friends, to your investors, to, you know, get different perspectives. Um, for me, they're always the most exciting moments of the business it is kind of those aha moments. Uh, where you, th you you think you might have solved something, and sometimes you're wrong. And after a bit of testing and speaking to people, you're like, oh, okay, that that wasn't a good idea, you know. Um, but th that doesn't kind of take away from that initial excitement because you know you kind of I think realize as a founder that a lot of those things that did work out originally started with those types of aha moments. So you know it might only be two in ten that work out, but you need to kind of pursue and think about you know all ten out of ten to actually work out you know those two that are going to work. Um, so for me, they're always the highs in the business is like those exciting moments, um, you know, where something just makes sense. You, know, you get clarity on something and it might be something someone internally in the business says to you. They might look at a problem in a different way and you're like, wow, like, you know, I hadn't thought about it like that. Yeah, well, let's let's try that. Let's test that. Um, you know, it comes from all sorts of different sources. Um, and, and then for me, I, I guess the flip side of that is. Um, you know, the, those kind of, um, you know, those low moments, I, I don't think come when those ideas are invalidated. To me, I, that's just part of the process. I don't really care when, you know, if ideas aren't great ideas, that's, that's fine. You know, the process of ideas, you know, um, you know is, is the exciting part. Um, yeah, the, the lows, I think, just come from, I think, exhaustion. Like, you know, it, it's just from, you know, just doing something nonstop. And, you know, it, it obviously takes a certain type of person to even want to do that in the first place. Um, but you do hit a wall. Like, you do, you know, after doing something over and over again and, and, and you know, just, you know, focusing, you know, so much of your time on, on one thing, um, you know, you eventually just, you know, you, you do burn out and, and you need to take a bit of time out and, and focus on different things. and you know, take a holiday or, you know, whatever it is that kind of helps you refresh and reset. So, you know, for me, it's, you know, a few times a year, I like to take a week off where I can just, you know, get away from the office, you know, you know, be in a totally new environment and, um, you know, whether it's with friends skiing or, you know, just going on a, you know, a smaller trip with my wife, like it, it doesn't really matter what it is, but just get away from, you know, being in that same place. And I think for me, that's the way I try and break out of those lulls and, and reset. Ooh, to just get away, um, disconnect. Yeah, and be inspired in a different way. Like when I'm away, I, I always try and like read or, or learn something different. So, 
you know, find something that's interesting, but in a totally different area to what I'm looking at. Uh, actually, my wife had a, a good way of approaching this, I thought, a few years ago, which was every month of the year, she set herself one topic she wanted to learn about. Um, so, you know, in December, we'd sit down for a drink and, and we'd brainstorm, okay, what are the, you know, what are the 12 topics think we want to learn about this year? And it might be, you know, World War II history. It would all be things that we'd probably come across or seen some documentary on that year or, you know, heard about um, and, and we want to just learn about, you know, it could be cryptocurrency or something totally different. And we'd brainstorm and come up with a few each. Um, and then we'd set, you know, the months of the year that we were going to learn them um, and, and then, you know, put in place like a way of kind of, um, you know, learning those topics. And, you know, you can only get so much detail in a month of learning it. And usually it might be, you know, reading a book, you know, reading stuff online, you know, trying to meet someone that knows a bit about that area, you know, listening to some podcasts. But, um, yeah, I think with business, the more you can learn about different parts of the world and how they operate, um, you know, often that will unlock secrets with your business. Um, so, you, you know, learning the history of something might, you know, open your eyes of how a problem could be solved with what you do. So there's a lot of subliminal stuff, I think, that comes from learning about totally different areas um, that then will benefit your business, but you won't know it at the time. Chris, thank you so much for coming in to have a chat with me. And I Pleasure. wish you unbelievable success with your company. I think it's incredible. You're a pioneer. I have a lot of admiration and, and, and respect for what you're doing. Um, and um, yeah, look forward to, to, the, to the trail that you're blazing. Yeah, great to be in the Finder office chatting to you. <laughs> Thanks so much, Chris. Thank you.